Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Good day and welcome to today's conversation podcast. Um, last week, my guest made news uh, following the presentation of the statement by the head of state, President Akainde Ichilima. My guest confronted the president and challenged the truthfulness of his statements. She's Jinch Senga, an MP from Mwense and a Mambilima constituency. Uh, Honorable Jinch Senga, welcome to today's Conversation Podcast. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Mamba, and uh, thank you so much for having me here today. And uh, to our viewers, I would like to say thank you for joining us. You have challenged the speaker right on the floor of the house. You've, I think there are famous instances, I think, where the country sees, even if you are soft-spoken, they see the militancy in you. You challenged the vice president and recently the president. Just speak to those uh, three issues and the circumstances that led you to challenge the speaker, the circumstances that led you to challenge the VIP, and the circumstances that made you challenge the president. Okay. Um, if you notice, when I rise to speak, uh, especially at the vice president's question time, I like to ask those questions that are uh, provoking. <laughs> <laughs> Those ones, that are, <laughs> those ones that are provoking and uh, those ones that are not constituency based. Okay. Uh, because just as I had earlier alluded to, I realize that I'm not only speaking for the people of Mambilima, but sometimes it's necessary to speak for, 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 for the country. For the country. Mm. So I usually like to uh, use that opportunity, the vice president's question time, to ask questions that are. Uh, uh, that are going to benefit the people of Zambia. Mm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, well, if, uh, if I ask a question that is uh, provoking and then the, the Madam Vice President uh, uses emotions to, to respond and sometimes, you know, she would refer to, uh, yeah, what are you talking about? Or, uh, no. <laughs> The reason why we ask questions is because we need answers, not answers uh, just for me, but answers to provide to everyone else that may see that question uh, necessary. So basically, I would say we shall continue to ask those provoking questions, mm. <laughs> you know, because uh, if we don't, then uh, our responsibility as members of uh, parliament, uh, to the extent that we're supposed to present and speak for the people, in the house, then it will be of no, it, it will have no no weight. And then also, one of the reasons that uh, makes me come out uh, in that uh, manner, now talking about the speaker, is because yeah. of uh, the way she presides. Mm. And I want to take this opportunity to say, um, this is the first female speaker. And I, I should be proud of her because as a woman, I feel she needs my support. But the, the, the way she presides over matters in the house, I don't think uh, it is the right way to do it. And uh, that is why uh, most of the time uh, when I'm rising on a matter of urgent public importance or anything like that, I always make sure that... Uh, I have something in my hands. Yeah. <laughs> I need to yeah. speak with authority. Mm -hmm. I need mm -hmm. to have evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember the last question, I, uh, the, the last time I rose on a matter of urgent public importance, I had uh, a letter with me. Yeah. Uh, 
this letter was headed and uh, it was stamped. And I think, uh, when, anyway, without uh, regard to the standing orders, uh, I thought there, have allowed we, me saw, we saw the speaker refuse you to speak, even if you, before you could introduce a matter. I needed to. And you said have a letter. Mm. Then she challenged you that mm. is there, is it authentic? Mm. Have you provided a certified copy? Did you get it correctly? I think that was, mm. that surprised all of us. Yes, because, because your duty was to speak to it and lay it on the table. So that, uh, I, then I, that is why I questioned. I said uh, it would be for you to determine whether the letter is authentic or not. Mm. Mm. I cannot determine whether a letter is authentic or not. That is the reason why we lay documents on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, so if she says, oh no, uh, before she even understands what kind of a document I have, then I think that is unfair already. What matter did you try to raise? What was the issue in that letter? Uh, the issue was that uh, satellite sales of mains had begun in uh, Livingstone. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask when uh, satellite sales will begin in these other uh, areas, areas, including your constituency, including my constituency, because mm. we, 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 satellites uh, 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 satellites are dotted in uh, different parts of the country. So, if they started in in southern province Livingstone, then when are they going to start in these other provinces? Also, mm. that was my 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 contention. And she couldn't even let and you ask she, the question. She could not allow me to speak. So. I had to make reference to a public, another public document, which was uh, uh, the newspaper, and that is that is when she 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 allowed me to speak. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are being curtailed all the time, and uh, it's really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. It's really unfortunate. No, you've put it up to that as a woman, you you feel obliged to support. The speaker because she's a woman, the vice president because she's a woman. But again, it has to be on merit. Yes. If their their conduct is betraying even the women that you know she support they are supposed to inspire confidence and support from you you cannot just blindly support them yeah yeah um, what would you like to see for young people in this country what are your thoughts I know you work through the party I know you have uh, uh, the party has programs and policies but when the young people look at you. They, they, they want to hear from you what your views are and if you can represent them on some of those issues. Um, basically, what I would say is that uh, let the youths rise. Let the youths rise and uh, they need to know that uh, they have a voice too because uh, this is their country and uh, they are also, uh, they, they, they have um, a big role to play in the development of the country. And, and really, uh, they are the largest number of voters uh, with uh, our women folk, of course. So I think the youths need to rise so that uh, they can defend themselves, they can speak for themselves. After all, uh, I remember that in 2021, the youths uh, woke up at four or three mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, to go and uh, cast their votes. Many youths uh, voted in 2021. So they should also uh, be a voice. They should speak for themselves and understand that they hold the power. Mm. And uh, they should hold uh, leaders uh, to accountability. They, sh they need to, to speak. Mm -hmm. That is what I would say for the youths. I, I think uh, I'm also happy that uh, the 13th House, we have uh, eight members of parliament who are less than uh, 35, the, 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 the youths. Um, I think it has never happened in our, in our, <coughs> in our history. So and there are very... there are eight of you in that house yes. who are below the age of thirty five. Yes. Ah, okay. Okay. So it's very encouraging, and I think the youths can uh, pick it from us to also understand that uh, they can also uh, take part in uh, providing development to the country by being strong, focused, and determined. To, if I mean, I always say, if I can do it, 
Mm. <laughs> Young you? woman, you did it. Mm. Yes, and uh, then you too can, can do it. So um, I think one of the things that we need to do is to ensure that we uh, keep our, our leaders accountable to uh, where we have, people have expectations. Yeah. People yeah. have expectations, so they need to see results. Mm. need to see results. Mm. Uh, I want you to provide these reflections on the governance by President Hakainde Ichilema. By exactly what you did, you know, uh, last Friday, he comes to deliver it's a constitutional mandate. He has to report to Parliament on the national values and principles of our country. I think the 2016 uh, constitutional amendments mandates him, mm -hmm. other than the annual speech that he gives before budget, He's also supposed to give this one in March, where he reports the progress his government is making on issues of ethics, morality, on national values, on ensuring that the nation is kept together. The rise of junkies, the drunkenness that has emerged, especially among young people, and the rise in corruption, the just a break, breaking down of uh, literally our morals and ethics. So the president, as usual, came and gave him what people might think is a fantastic speech. But you called him a liar. Let's speak to that. As you start to hear what you are speaking, and then when he finished and he was going out in splendor and pomp to the, to the, to the support of his uh, MPs, you had a different view. Tell us. Okay. Um, first of all, I'll start by saying that uh, uh, as a leader, we need to understand that we, we owe a duty to our people to give uh, reasons, uh, guidance to uh, the community in which we belong, and in his case, to the country. Um, there are a lot of things that were said prior to the elections by the, by the president, a lot of things. Uh, and the reason why I've said this is because, uh, the reason why I've talked about duty is because when you say something as a leader, you need to be accountable for what you say to the extent that if it's not working or maybe it's not possible, you need to go back to the community to go and give reasons or to explain wh why uh, what people were expecting or what you were expecting as a leader has not worked. I think that is uh, the first thing. And uh, as leaders, we need to be honest. <laughs> let, me, let me say that uh, it is known uh, that uh, we politicians are liars. But I think uh, the extent also to which you lie, there should be some, uh, maybe for lack of words, some decency. Yeah. If you remember prior to the elections, during those campaigns, we were promised that uh, things would be different. We were promised that uh, the price of milimi would uh, be would be uh, 50 kwacha. We were also promised that uh, uh, we would not have uh, uh, load shedding anymore. We were also uh, told that uh, uh, the middleman, with the as regards the the, the purchase of fuel would be uh, cut out to the extent that uh, fuel will now be at a better, better price. But everything that we see now is uh, very different. He also said that uh, we would be able to see what democracy really is. But now people are being pushed left, right, center. Every day someone from the opposition is called to, to the police station. Uh, over allegations that are not even well uh, established. People are being kept in cells for over, uh, over 24 hours without being uh, uh, charged. Look at, we have uh, uh, this uh, Rizwan. He's still in uh, the eastern province there in... Uh, Rizwan Patel. Rizwan Patel, yes. He has not uh, been formally charged. And it's been over... Uh, I think six months, if I'm not... Uh, two, two months, but two, is in the second month. This, this is the second month. So that still is not 24 hours. 
So when we look at uh, a lot of things, look at the corruption. Corruption now, because <laughs> I think they said, uh, no, the, the patriotic front are thieves and whatnot, but uh, the, what we are seeing now in, in broad daylight, it's like uh, our country is being torn apart, really. And it's just being done in the open like that. Um, I would give uh, uh, a lot of uh, examples, really. So the question is, how do you uh, expect to trust such a leader? When we talk about the dollar rates, and apparently there was a time frame, 10 hours, and then I don't know if it's 14 or somewhere there, the dollar was supposed to have reached a certain uh, uh, number. So we need to get to a level in the country where if you think as a leader you failed to provide the solution, the, the, uh, what you had uh, asked the people to, what you had uh, told the people, you need to come out in the open to say you have failed or maybe it's not going to work, you need to provide the time frame or something. Everything that our, most of the things that uh, our president said during uh, those, uh, the campaigns, I'm not certain I can actually point at one thing to really be proud of and say this is what's happening. They talked about cadarism. Uh, uh, what is happening these days? The cadres are everywhere, in the markets, in the bus stations, and they are doing it publicly. I will also give you an example. I had uh, a by-election in Mambidima constituency for the council chairperson. That by-election was not free and fair. They beat up our people, they intimidated them, and we almost lost uh, uh, a life of uh, a certain uh, old man. So when they say there's no cadarism, what exactly do they mean? Because most of these by-elections, we can even talk about the by-election in Mansabombe, mm. where our people were beaten. Our people were beaten, and not only beaten, they were intimidated, there was corruption as usual, where uh, there were about five ministers that had come uh, Into in, a the, small in, area. in the ward mm. <laughs> and presented. We have five uh, ministers to come and uh, see what is happening in the by election, work in that particular by election, and publicly giving out money. Eh? To the extent where, uh, I think, uh, apart from money, they were even given uh, things like millimil. Uh, and in some areas, I also hear they were given uh, uh, fertilizers, like before, mm. yes. So all those things, then, <laughs> I don't know if you can say that uh, things are going well in the country. Yeah. It's like you said, I'm, I'm going to do, th no, when, uh, when you vote for us, uh, the UPND, this is what's going to come. We shall do things differently. There will be no other reason. There will be no, but that is exactly what is happening. If you said you pushed away the patriotic front because they were violent, then why are you doing the same thing? Because we expect you to, we expect something different from you. Hmm. Now, if you are doing the opposite of what you said, then why should I not challenge you? Because if someone says you don't have evidence, just before I came here, I was watching <laughs> a video of uh, where he said uh, uh, the reason why PF is not doing well is because they lack uh, good leadership. That is why the fuel prices were, uh, were high. That is why the dollar rate was high. Then what can I say? Because if you said it was poor leadership, then I'll also say it is poor leadership on your part. There's nothing different. Leadership <laughs> will always be leadership. So if yeah. you said it is poor, then even in this situation, in this year, 2024, it is uh, still poor leadership. Mm -hmm. So some of these things that we say uh, have uh, implications. And so when uh, you, then I would also when say... You called, when you called him out mm -hmm. and you said, Wufi Makateka Wufi, he mm -hmm. turned back. What did he come to say to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, first of all, let me say, uh, lies have short legs. Yeah. They are very short-lived. That is why uh, I remember watching a clip where the president, uh, Dr. 
Frederick, Frederick Chiluba said, uh, uh, you see, the things that you say now will have uh, repercussions in the, in the future to the extent that you need to be careful with what you say now so that uh, it doesn't affect you, the future, you know? Uh, so at that point, uh, if you notice during the speech, I actually walked out when he started talking about uh, uh, the judiciary. Yeah. There was, I don't think I was really happy with uh, what he said uh, about uh, the judiciary and uh, how things are working with the, uh, the, the, that arm of, uh, of the government. So I, I walked out a bit just to... <laughs> to cool down. <laughs> yes. Because you couldn't because stand him I telling those lies. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so um, when he came uh, after I shouted, uh, I want to say that when I'm given an opportunity to meet the president, even if it's at parliament, then that is my opportunity. I had an opportunity to meet him, and it was my opportunity that time to speak to him. <laughs> so that was the platform I had. Yeah. And uh, when I shouted that, I think he heard, and then he was almost leaving, and then he got back. The question he asked me was, Ushe, nene bona leta drought. Mm -hmm. uh, if you saw, he was even pointing, because he, he was trying to say it's an act of God. Yeah. Then I said, yes, it is. That is why I don't even want to talk about the drought. Let us talk about the real issues. Because we were talking in Bemba. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, apparently the president has been speaking good Bemba of late. Uh, yeah. So I said, Money Ubunga, Mutengo Ubunga Po Fikiri. Money Nyama Light, Motilo Jedin Takuakabi. Money Nyumtengo Amafta, a few prices. Look at the dollar. This is the th these are the things we need to be talking about, Mr. President. Well, <laughs> he didn't have anything to say, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that's how he said it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how he had to leave. No, first I would like I would to commend to... you. I would like to commend you for that act of bravery. Mm -hmm. You were very, very brave to confront the president. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you you were issue-based. You want answers from your leader. You want answers from our leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, you challenged him. And I think all of us in the country must commend you. Mm -hmm. And our appeal to the UPND and this leadership is that they shouldn't intimidate you. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't threaten you. You have a right to speak. Mm -hmm. You are in the sanctity of parliament mm -hmm. and that they should respect. And he himself, the president, came to face you. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that he took it maliciously. He wanted to hear what your concerns are. And he wanted to blame the drought. And I'm glad that he attempted to blame the drought. Because when President Edgar Lungu said, it's because of the drought, he said, no, it's a leadership issue. Yes. You can prepare. They didn't prepare. They've exported all the maize. You know, there are many things you can do with the impending drought. They were warned in advance. They haven't prepared. So it's also a leadership issue, like he said then. Yeah, so continue. I just wanted to contribute there. Yes, uh, so basically, uh, I think the president should come out in the open. When things are, are not going well, he should come out in the open and explain. Remember, I said leaders should be held accountable for certain things that they say. So if you said this is going to be like this, this is going to be like this, there are a lot of things, a lot of things. Maybe I've, I've even left out uh, many of them. The so promises what, and pledges he, yes. he made as campaign promises. Yes, campaign promises. So I would actually urge the president to say, come out in the open and explain to Would you want him to, to apologize? <laughs> Uh, when I say he should come out in the open, that's also a way of uh, uh, humbling himself. There's a certain extent where uh, things will not go as you planned. Mm. But if you come out in the open and say, Mwebantu, Nadi Lubapa, Elwecha Lengo Kwat Fienda, we know if into Nifi. And uh, in Bemba, to Alkota, Idiati, Amanoya, Minamu, if we say I am Fiul, I am Chul. The, the, that act I put up on Friday should actually mean something to him.
to say, this is a young person who has approached me in such a manner. Then they, I should do something about it because that was a, it, everyone was watching and everyone heard from the speech. 70% uh, of it was uh, uh, not well put. So I think it should come out in the open and uh, tell the people to say, this is what is happening. I failed to deliver this. Give me uh, some time. And I think that is what a good leader should do. Mm -hmm. Not everything will sit well. Not everything will go as planned. So what you do now is to come out in the open and say, if you failed, say I've failed. If you need a bit of time, say, okay, I think I said I'll deliver in March, but maybe let's see what will happen in August or something like that. Rather than, because you see, now it's lie after lie. It's like you're just, you cannot build up on a lie. Mm. Then it becomes a problem. You see? We, we have a lot of people are affected by certain decisions. We talked about uh, fertilizer distribution. Distribute fertilizer to the areas where it is predicted that we will have proper and good rainfall. What has happened? Most of the, daily, the fertilizer was uh, taken to the southern province. We have a problem now. I'm not so sure how the harvest will be, especially with the, with the we, we've had poor rains. So it's really a challenge. How it's was really the fertilizer distribution in Mambilima and in Mwense? Did you get enough uh, fertilizer? Did your cooperatives and groups get what they had registered for? <laughs> So what do you do with uh, the, 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 such kind of uh, uh, sharing of fertilizer? Because definitely when you share fertilizer, then the harvest is not good. Mm -hmm. And what happened is that uh, the people that were at the helm of the, the distribution of fertilizer, they decided to start uh, sharing the fertilizers amongst themselves. That is in my constituency in particular. Mm -hmm. So the, the delivery, first of all, it was delayed. And then now the, the, the distribution itself, people did not get the, the proper quantities because they ended up sharing the, the fertilizers. When you share fertilizer, the quantity is not good. The harvest is not good. It's, it's just as simple as that. Mm. Mm. So there are a lot of things uh, involved. Yeah. And yeah. I think uh, I want to urge the government to go back to the drawing board. They need to realize that uh, uh, it is the people that put them there. It is the people that have given them uh, the mandate. And because it is the people that have given you the mandate, that is the reason why you owe them an explanation and that is why you need to uh, uh, deliver to them. Mm -hmm. You have been given that position, so you need to deliver. Yeah. If you don't deliver, that is why I said you come back to the drawing board. Tell the people what is happening on the ground so that uh, people will say, okay, this, this, this. So I think for me, um, I, I, I feel like I did the right thing that day on uh, Friday. It is my duty to speak not only for the people of Mambilima. When I'm given a chance, I need to speak as a youth. When I'm given a chance, I need to speak as a woman. So uh, it, I think uh, that was the, the right thing to do. Wonderful, wonderful. No, you did well. Like I've said, we've congratulated you on that. Um, as we come to the end of the program, uh, just tell us your aspirations for this country. What would you like to see? Where would you like a Zambia to be in the next 60 years? We've recognized the mistakes and challenges that we've had in the past. And now we are going into the next 60 years. What, what are your views and what are your aspirations? Mm, I would like to see a Zambia that is... Uh not dependent on, um, well, I understand that uh, countries do depend on each other, but I need to see a country, uh, Zambia, that is able to, to fend for itself, because as a country we've got uh, so many resources, we are endowed with so many resources, so I'd like to see um, 
an independent uh, Zambia. Um, and I also like to see a, a leadership that is caring for their citizens. Um, I would like to see leaders that really understand why they are getting into leadership. I think I'm really passionate about this in my constituency. If I don't manage to do certain things, I'll clearly just put it to the ground to say, okay, this we can't manage. Uh, let's have a bit more time, then maybe we can deliver at a certain point. Um, uh, I think it would, it, 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 when we start with uh, leadership, I think uh, we would be headed uh, in the right direction. Leaders need to be honest. They need to understand why they are getting into, into leadership. Then I think from there, uh, maybe we might have uh, a, a different Zambia. Uh, selfish uh, leadership is not what we need. We know what is going on in the country. We've seen a lot of things that are happening here and there. But when a leader is selfless, uh, they, 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 they will really make uh, uh, a difference. And uh, I think uh, Zambia will not be the same anymore. Mm -hmm. Because even if we are endowed with uh, resources, we cannot really be independent. Why? Because a country needs leaders to make certain decisions. So if leaders are making decisions that are, uh, are self-centered, then I think uh, we can't progress. We need leadership that wants to see other people thrive. We need to see leadership that will uh, make Zambia different. Because if you, if, if the, as, as, uh, as leaders, we should be able to say, this is where my friend left, and I'm going to build up on this to make something better. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is why uh, we always say, governments of a going concern. Mm -hmm. It is to make things better. It is to build up on what your colleague had left. So I wish to see an, uh, an, uh, an independent uh, Zambia. And then uh, let me take this opportunity to, to call on the, the youths and the women as a large number of voters. Let's uh, continue to push so that uh, we can see a different uh, Zambia, really. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, I think I enjoyed the conversation and I enjoyed the governance issues you raised, the need for accountability and the need for our leaders to be held to account. Uh, Madam Jinch Senga would like to wish you well in Parliament Keep on the battles. I think the country is behind you. The battles are big, but just know that the country is uh, behind you. They want, like you said, the executive must do their role. You, at the National Assembly in Parliament, must do your part and must be allowed to do your part. The judiciary must be the independent arbiter and must not collude or participate in injustice against citizens. They must be truly an independent arbiter for a country to develop. And then the citizenry, you have that role to play, you have that role to participate in, um, in the governance of our country. It's not up to Jean, it's not up to uh, the president, it's not up to who to develop this country, it's up to all of us. Mm -hmm. So with those few words, unless Honorable Jean Senga, you have some last words before we conclude? Um, my last words would be, as leaders, let's, be, let's know what to say and uh, when to say it, because uh, we have people that are counting on us. We have thousands of people that are counting on us, on us and waiting to see that uh, their problems are solved. So we have a huge task as, uh, as leaders. So I think we should always go back to the drawing board, remember why we are in leadership, just as I had said, I insist. <laughs> remember, I think the moment we begin to understand why we are in leadership, we will never be the same. Because you have it in your heart to say, this person here is, has such and such problems, and because of these problems that they have, 
as a leader, they are depending on you to actually solve uh, their problems. So let's also try to observe some, some, some honesty. <laughs> I think we will, uh, we will grow as a, as a country like that. Accountability, it is our responsibility. Those people that voted for us, put us in office, are expectant. They shall hold us accountable for everything that we say and do. Uh, mm. I think that would be uh, your last words. My last words. Thank you very much. Dear viewers, uh, until next time and until we have um, another guest, I would like to thank Honorable Jane Senga who came to be with us to discuss the affairs of our country. So God bless Zambia, God bless our country, and shalom, shalom. Thank you so much. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Savage. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpundu. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.